What is up guys? It is Ash Josh Siza and today we are here at Irv Siever Motorcycles with the brand new BMW R18 Bagger. This is the big brother to the R18 that we picked up a few weeks ago. Special thanks to Irv Siever Motorcycle for giving us this motorcycle for a few days to really run it through the paces. As somebody who has ridden a lot of Harley Davidson baggers throughout the years, I am very, very curious to see how this bike performs when stacked up with some of the more well-known bikes like the Street Glide or even some of the Indian baggers. This bike is stunning. It's really, really something to, to look at. It definitely turns eyes when you're going down the road. We have actually spent the last few days going all around town, putting this bike through the paces. So we've got a good feel on the engine, the weight, the suspension, the technology and the design of this bike. So really excited to bring to you guys the review of the brand new BMW R18 Bagger right after this. Well, all right, guys, we are not at Irv Seaver Motorcycles anymore. We are actually pulled over on the side of the road. And that is because we shot this whole video only to realize that the microphone wasn't really working. So nothing like a day in a motovlog. But we wanted to bring you guys this full review of the R18 Bagger. So we are shooting this video again for the second time. So stay tuned. Here we go. BMW R18 Bagger. So this motorcycle is... It is a really interesting bike. Um, this is BMW's entrance into the touring bagger world. Um, this is a, a class of motorcycle that has been dominated really by Harley Davidson. To some extent, Indian's been a decent player in the game. But yeah, this is gonna be the big brother to BMW's R18 um, and the R18 Classic. This has the same 1800 cc or 1802 to be specific cc engine in it. It is gonna have a different wheelbase, different rake angle, different suspension. So they definitely took this engine and did some things to really make this bike a full touring bike. Obviously you're gonna have the full fairing right here. You're gonna have a more comfortable seat. You're gonna have better suspension on the bike. You have floorboards, which the R18 Classic does have, um, but this bike feels like it's ready to pick up and go across the country. So a couple quick facts about this bike, things that full disclosure you can read on the website, but we'll go ahead and go through them anyways. Uh, this bike does have a 6.3 gallon fuel tank. It has a 10.25 inch TFT display on it that BMW is using for some of its other bikes like the K1600. And hopefully, fingers crossed, they're gonna put this same display in the new GS1200. Uh, 50s or rumored 1300s when they come out here in the next couple years. Um, this bike does have Marshall Gold speakers in the front fairing as well as in the rear saddlebags. The rear saddlebag speakers also function as subwoofers, which is crazy. Um, and then some of the noteworthy features on this bike is this bike does come with a power reverse gear so there's a little lever on the side here. Uh, I did test it out in another video that I'll go ahead and link to right here but it does have a reverse gear. And then by far the craziest feature on this bike that I have seen is it has active cruise control. We actually shot a quick little video while we were on the freeway a few minutes ago um, that we're gonna splice in here where I actually show you the active cruise control live. I set the miles per hour to 76 miles an hour and then just let it do its thing. So it literally slows down if a car gets in front of you and is slower. And then once that car moves out of the way, it'll speed back up to the um, to the speed that you have set. So that is a crazy, crazy feature on this motorcycle. And then you have some fancy things like you have link braking between the front and the rear brake and then in the rear to the front brake. So definitely nice to see. And then one of the more popular things that BMW has introduced into this heritage lineup is the three different ride modes that come with this bike. So you have uh, the rock, the roll, and the rain mode. So rock being your most aggressive kind of tune. It's going to be snappy. It's going to rumble. Uh, definitely going to be more of a sport kind of tune. And then roll is just going to be your basic kind of standard going around town, uh, good fuel economy. And then rain mode is going to be where it's at, at its most sluggish, obviously given the name meant to be if it's it's raining or something where you really don't want to have a lot of snap in your throttle and introduce a lot of 
low end torque, uh, the rain mode is going to prevent that. So that's an overview of this motorcycle. Uh, this is the first edition bike that we are on, so it's going to come with some pinstripes, some extra chrome features. Uh, it does have the premium package on it, so it has heated grips and heated seat on it. And this bike is going to come in at a whopping $25,000, give or take, US. So it is, it, it's honestly pretty competitively priced with the Harley Davidson and the Indian baggers given a lot of the tech and things that you get on it. So a little bit of an overview about the bike, but again, I wanted to get into more than just the things that you can read on a piece of paper or read on the website and really get an idea of like how this bike actually feels. So we're going to cover the design of this motorcycle. We're going to cover the engine and suspension. We're going to get into the technology and then I'm going to lay out kind of my final pros and cons of this bike, things that I really like, things that I feel like could be improved. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about what we always talk about on these bike reviews. And that is who is this bike designed? for what are the types of people that I think would benefit from stepping onto the brand new BMW R18 bagger. All right, so first things first, we are going to talk about the design of this motorcycle. So this is arguably one of my favorite parts of this bike is just how this thing looks while we're going down the road. Uh, over the past few days, special thanks to Irv Seaver Motorcycles in Southern California for letting us take this bike out for a couple days. Uh, we've been able to kind of take it and put it through all the paces. And one of the things that I've noticed is we've gone to a couple uh, popular biker spots here in Southern California and everywhere that we take it, this bike steals the show. When you park it next to a bunch of street glides and Indian baggers and all the rest of them, this bike really stands out. The big BMW boxer engine with the horizontally opposed cylinder sticking out on either side. This bike is a head turner. Honestly, the beautiful lines that this bike has, it really, really stands out. The way that the saddlebags just kind of blend into the frame. And then honestly, even this big old fairing that you have in front of you, doesn't feel like this big kind of obtrusive thing. They really, really did a nice job. And just the overall lines of this bike, how it looks when you're looking at it, and then just the attention to detail that BMW has in this motorcycle has been really, really impressive. So a bike is a combination of its design, its engine, the suspension, the ergonomics, the technology on the bike. And so next up, we are gonna talk about the engine and the suspension of this BMW R18 bagger. So like I said earlier in the video, this bike does share the same engine, the same 1802 cc boxer engine of its little brothers, the R18 and the R18 Classic. And I don't notice any tuning differences. I mean, it feels just as much alive as the other bikes. And I will say in the last video, which if you guys haven't seen that video where I do a full review on the R18, go ahead and look at it. I'll go ahead and link to it right here in the video. But some of the things that I really liked about the tuning of this engine in that more cruiser bike, I'm honestly not as crazy about in this big touring bike. For instance, when you're at a stoplight, this bike still does shake. It definitely lets you know it's here. Um, this is a BMW that's in its heritage lineup, so maybe they designed this bike for somebody that you know wants a touring bike but still wants to know that it's you know it's a motorcycle. This bike still does shake. It definitely lets you know it's here. Um, this is a BMW that's in its heritage lineup, so maybe they designed this bike for somebody that you know wants a touring bike but still wants to know that it's you know it's a motorcycle um, and they could have made it smooth, but they chose to make it uh, feel very rugged, uh, very real, kind of carnal feeling. I mean, you still feel a lot of the engine shake and your seat, your handlebars, and to some extent the floorboards. Um, but yeah, that's just interesting. It has a ton of low-end torque. I mean, this bike from off the line, it gets up, it goes. You don't notice at all that this bike weighs just shy of 900 pounds. If you look at this bike through the lens of other baggers, uh, it's going to perform as well, if not better, than some of the 114 bikes. Um, this bike, I think, technically has 110 cubic inch displacement in it. Uh, don't quote me on that. But, you know, it feels very, very similar to the 114. One thing that I do feel like is lacking on this bike that honestly the like Harley Davidson M8 platform performs better on is it's going to roll on speeds from you know 65 to 85 miles an hour. So this bike does it, but it it doesn't really feel like it has a ton of uh, top end torque. Where I feel like the M8 platform really really sinks. This bike shines in the low end. It shines from you know speeds of zero to sixty. Um, 
that's where I really notice uh, this BMW engine performs at its best. Yeah, the suspension on this bike is different also. So they did a shorter wheelbase on this bike. Uh, they did some different suspension and then there's a different rake angle. So honestly, this bike to me actually handles a little bit better than the R18 Classic and the R18 uh, just regular cruiser bikes. This bike to me, interestingly enough, even though it's heavier, um, is better at lower speeds, is uh, better uh, just overall handling in general. So that's something really interesting. I haven't noticed this bike uh, handling poorly at lower speeds. Again, it is a big heavy bagger bike, so you need to look at handling through that lens. Uh, but this bike handles as good, if not better, than its counterparts from other companies. Uh, one thing that I do have to knock on this bike is its brakes. The brakes to me just feel really, really sluggish and I feel like they should be a little more responsive given how heavy this bike is. That's kind of the engine and the suspension feel of this bike. It is a, a, a very well refined bike. I mean, this is certainly a bike that you could literally just drive off the dealership and go across country, no problem at all. I mean, you could put down eight, 900 miles in a day on this bike and probably not have any back pain or any real fatigue other than just, you know, being on a motorcycle for that long. All right, so next we're gonna go over the technology on this bike. Uh, this to me is, if you know, it, it probably is a tie between design and technology, my two favorite categories for this motorcycle where I think this bike really sets itself apart. So the technology on this bike is outstanding. You obviously have a big 10.25 inch TFT display that you can basically program to do whatever you want. So right now I have my navigation on the right hand side, uh, and then you can have kind of whatever you want on this main display. And then, you know, on here, you can have radio navigation. You can show what your iPhone's playing. The one thing that I wish BMW would introduce is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto onto these. Um, I feel like that would be way, way more convenient than just using the standard BMW Motorrad apps. Um, you know, I'm actually not sure completely if there is a way to do that. So I'd be interested to kind of see what they do and release in the future here but we are gonna try some slow speed maneuvers here in the parking lot and just see you know how this bike really performs let's see if we can do a full lock u-turn and yeah i mean with any kind of bike like this you're gonna notice the weight of the fairing um but you know if you're coming from a street glide or something like that and you're just curious to see you know how this bike is going to perform versus it. Uh, these bikes are oh let's see <laughs> well it's a it's a three spot u-turn so certainly you know not as good as you know a lot of other bikes but this is a big 900 pound kind of touring bike so there you go all right back to the tech sorry rabbit trail so some of the technology on this that i am most excited about is the adaptive cruise control. So earlier today, I wanted to show you guys this in action. So we recorded um, some footage where I was on the freeway and tested this. So we're gonna cut to that footage right now. All right, guys, so it is the time of the video that I wanted to just take a second and show you guys the adaptive cruise control. Full confession, we're shooting this a little bit out of order from the ride, but I'm on the freeway right now and I have the cruise control set to 76 miles an hour. And on this BMW R18 bagger, it has full adaptive cruise control. That means if you guys can see right here down on this little icon, you can see when there's a car in front of you and this bike will actually slow down and speed up depending on the type of traffic. So we are on the 55 freeway here in Southern California, eight o'clock in the morning. So kind of in the heat of like rush hour time. Uh, and we're gonna see how this thing fares. So I'm literally gonna let adaptive cruise control do whatever it's going to do and see if we can't get this bike to slow down and speed up on its own all right so we got a car coming up and the bike is starting to slow down it's going to 70 miles an hour based on the car in front of us again my hand is not on the throttle at all <laughs> that's a crazy feature okay so it's slowing down it fully senses that there's a car in front of me and it did what it was supposed to do it was a very gradual slowdown it wasn't jerky at all <laughs> that is a crazy feature on a motorcycle 
it's almost, I mean, this thing is like, I feel like the Goldwing is maybe the only kind of motorcycle that has that feature. And it's starting to speed up as this car is speeding up in front of us. So again, I have the cruise control set to 76. If I change lanes here and there's now not a car in front of me, the bike starts to speed up on its own. 72, 73, 74, man. What a crazy feature. And it's smart enough to know that this car is beside me, not in front of me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this car in a safe way. And here I am going 76 miles an hour again, using the adaptive cruise control on the brand new BMW R18 bagger. Well, all right guys. So as you can see, that adaptive cruise control is crazy. It works really, really well. That is something that is so unique on this motorcycle that I think only a couple bikes um, out today have it. I know, I think Honda Goldwings have it, and then BMW is introducing that feature onto some of its other bikes, so it's crazy. I mean, it works really well. Honestly, I didn't want to like it. I thought it was gonna be gimmicky. I thought it was you know, gonna be feel unsafe, but it worked really, really well. So some technology that comes on this bike, uh, this is the premium package, but it does have heated seat and heated grips. Uh, there's this little phone holder thing in here um, that keeps your phone cool. There's a dedicated fan there. Um, I don't know if anybody would really use that, but you do have it there. Uh, you do have integrated uh, brake lights and turn signals into the rear bags. That does come standard on this bike, so that is a very cool feature. And then, like I said, you do have a reverse gear, which is not really electronics, but it, it's a really cool feature. You have your different ride modes on this bike. Uh, this bike is packed with good electronic features. And definitely, I think, where BMW uh, stands out a lot on this motorcycle. One thing that I really do appreciate on this bike is BMW chose to do LED lights all the way around. So you're going to have an LED headlamp, LED turn signals, LED in the back. There is no halogen on this bike. I really hate that there's some motorcycle manufacturers that are still doing halogen bolts on any of their motorcycles. I just feel like LED is so much more efficient, so much more bright, and honestly so much more safe. So uh, hats off to BMW for including LED lights. So yeah, that that's kind of a, that's a snapshot of all of the great electronics that are on this motorcycle. Again, between design and electronics, I feel like this bike really, really uh, shines the most. All right, guys, well, we're gonna wrap up this video with talking about some of the pros and cons about this bike. We've touched on a little bit of them so far, um, but let's start off with the pros. Let's start off with the things that are really, really good about this bike. So obviously one of my favorite parts about this bike are gonna be the design of this bike. The lines on it are clean. This bike is a head turner. When you park it at a shop or you go to your local motorcycle bar, people are gonna notice this bike. BMW did an outstanding job in their attention to detail all of the little things on this bike so hats off to bmw for that this to me is the best looking bagger that's on the market right now um and yeah there i don't think there's any close comparison from harley davidson or indian on the look and design of the motorcycles this bike really shines in its technology from the big 10.25 inch tft display to the adaptive cruise control to the reverse gear to the different ride modes to even the, the integrated speakers with the subwoofers on it. This bike comes literally ready to go. Um, this bike has heated grips and a heated seat that comes standard on this bike. This bike is literally loaded down with cutting edge technology on a motorcycle. Um, definitely, at least in the bagger category, this bike shines, no close second. BMW crushed it with technology. And then honestly, the price for this bike. We touched on it a little bit, but this bike comes in um, at right around $25,000. Uh, that's US price. And for that money, you cannot touch this package of motorcycles. So, you know, even as we talk about some of the cons and stuff next, this bike, for what it's priced at, I know $25,000 is expensive for a motorcycle, but in this category of baggers and things like that, this is one of the more competitively priced bikes for what you get. Um, for Harley Davidson, you're going to have to go up to like the CVO level, which you're going to be in the $40,000 range to get a lot of these features on. So, BMW definitely packed this thing full of features and that alone might outweigh some of the cons that we're going to talk about right now so one of the major cons to me that i actually don't care for on this bike is funny enough one of the things that i really like on my bike and that is the overall rumble and feel 
of this 1800 cc engine on this touring platform so for me i love that feel on my cruiser bike again it has the same engine um, when i got on this touring bike i don't know for me i had this expectation that it was going to be this really luxurious kind of smooth thing um, again this is personal preference um, bmw obviously designed this bike to have um, that kind of rumble and feel to me i just i don't know that I would love that if I was going kind of across country on this bike, especially knowing what some of the other baggers have and just their feel of it. Um, I don't, I don't love. And then um, one of the major things that I feel like could be improved on this bike are honestly just the brakes on it. So again, this bike just comes in just shy of 900 pounds and I don't feel like the brakes are super responsive. They're going to get the job done. I mean, it's not unsafe by any stretch uh, I just feel like they could have been a little bit more touchy and you know when you actually grab I feel like it could have been slightly more responsive um, but that's just me um, for me you know I I don't love uh, fixed fairing motorcycles um, if I was gonna pick a bagger I would probably pick uh, something like the road glide or something but one of the reasons that I guess I don't love this fixed fairing. It's just some of the buffeting that happens. If you're going above 50 miles an hour, you get some buffeting in your helmet here. And that's just gonna be because of, obviously this windshield right here does a great job of pushing air up and over you. I don't feel really heavy wind on my helmet. I'm five foot 10, um, but because of how well it does at blocking the air, you get a little bit of negative air pressure right in the pocket and you're gonna get a little buffeting. So uh, if buffeting really bothers you, um, again, it might be different for you based on how tall you are, but that might be something to consider. It's just a, a negative on this bike. And then probably my least favorite thing on this motorcycle is actually the storage capacity in the saddlebag. So when you look at this bike, uh, the saddlebags honestly look like a decent size and I thought so also. When you actually open these saddlebags, they are like really, really small. I feel like there is a lot of wasted room in the bags where BMW just made them bigger and have more storage options. Like, no joke, I can fit my jacket and it literally fills up an entire saddlebag and there is no more room in there. So for, again, the purpose of this bike, if you're going to be taking this bike long distances, um, the, the saddlebags literally aren't sufficient storage at all for anything more than just like a quick day trip. You can't really pack a lot of stuff in there. That's kind of my one major knock. Again, not that big of a deal for most people, uh, but it is something worth noting and talking about. So here we are at the conclusion of this video we've talked about a lot we've covered the overview of the specs we've covered the engine we've covered the suspension we've covered some of the ergonomics the technology the pros and cons and i'm sure you guys are wondering all right josh who would you think this bike is for so i think this bike is for somebody one that cares about design that wants a bike that is really designed flawlessly has great lines is gonna stand out somebody who loves technology and honestly wants a feel of a motorcycle that is reminiscent of of a different age that has some of that rumble has some of the rawness those characteristics they are somebody that wants to be unique there's someone that wants to stand out and for those people or it might be somebody who literally says hey I only have a certain amount of money to spend and I want the absolute most I can get for my money. I would say BMW has done an extraordinary job at packing in so many good features for, you know, right around $25,000. And you can get this bike, I believe, as inexpensive as like $22,000, $23,000. And for what you get on this bike, I mean, it really is a fantastic machine. Um, again, the technology on this, the ergonomics, even how comfortable the seat is stock on this bike. You can literally just take this bike from the dealership, go seven, eight hundred miles, and not have it completely tax your body. So, this bike is really ready to go for the money. I think BMW has done a terrific job at entering into a category that has been pretty much dominated by Harley Davidson. Um, I think this bike is a great bike. I would definitely recommend it for those people that are, you know, maybe on the fence about it. I'm curious to see, you know, what improvements BMW is going to do on these models in the future and how they're going to further kind of step into uh, the bagger world. Well, guys, 
that is it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. If you've liked this video, please go ahead and like the video and give us a subscribe. That helps us more than you know. It helps us to be able to produce more content like this. And again, special shout out to Irv Seaver BMW for letting us take this bike out, put it through the paces. I appreciate you guys watching this video, being a part of the motorcycle community, regardless of what motorcycle you're on, whether you're on a Harley Davidson, a BMW, Suzuki, KTM, just get out there and ride guys. It's not about what kind of bike you're on, it's about the destination and making good community along the way. So that's that. Thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you guys for watching this video. Till we meet again, peace.